Prayer concerns this day, we keep in our prayers Paul and Gail McKim, Beryl Ruth, Carol Lape, Bob Gregory, Eugene Moyer, Dylan McKenzie, Marissa Solar, Bob Dutt, Julie, Rebecca, and Trinity, uh, Joyce Sutliff, Nevin Smith, Robin Hayes, Kathy Price, Carol Workheiser, Sue Sutliff, and Allison, Kim, Ray Gerke, the Mucci family, uh, John Goodison, whose surgery has been postponed till in January, Stacey Ressler and family on the death of her father, Jeff and Darlene, Leslie, Jim, and Brenda. We keep all those folks in our prayers. And if you have other prayer concerns, uh, please let us know, give us a call, and we'll continue to pray for all these people in need. Virtual worship continues this Sunday at 9 a.m. We'll be live on Facebook, and then it will be posted to YouTube. The 800 phone service is still in play. You can find that number in the newsletter. Uh, Zoom Bible study. We had a great night last night. That will happen again Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you'd like to be a part of that, contact Pastor Jen. Um, we will probably not have Holden Evening Prayer tonight, uh, but we will post some wonderful piano music by Ellen Rissinger. So look for that around 7.30. Uh, we'll hope to have that up, and you can enjoy that this night as you're nestled at home safely. Um, Thursday, tomorrow night, making music at 6.15 with Miss Katie. If you need anything else, please let us know. Uh, we're in this together, and we're going to make it through. Um, but please let us know how we can be of help and support. Will you join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, power, powerful counselor, hope of the afflicted, descend into our hearts and establish in us your loving dominion. Enkindle in us our, your, your soul and in our souls your fire of love, so we may be wholly subject to you. We believe that you, when you dwell in us, you also prepare a dwelling for the Father and the Son. Uh, come to us, counselor of abandoned souls and protector of the needy. Help the afflicted, strengthen the weak, and support the wavering. Come and purify us. Let no evil desire take possession of us. For your love will help us in this terrible time. Come to us, glory of the living and hope of the dying. Lead us by your grace that we may always be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The reading this day comes from the 61st chapter of Isaiah, the first four verses. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is probably the world's most sentimental and popular Christmas story. When ABO was down in Williamsburg just last year, it seems like ages ago, we saw a descendant of Dickens do a one-man performance of the story. It was glorious, incredible. Anyway, the story you'll remember tells of the old miser Ebenezer Scrooge, who in a series of dreams learns about the true Christmas spirit. Scrooge has always mistreated his impoverished, cheerful clerk, Bob Cratchit. When the ghost of Christmas present takes him to the Cratchit house, Scrooge sees himself through Cratchit's eyes and realizes that his miserly, unloved life has been a waste. A changed man after his terrifying dreams, Scrooge contributes generously to the Cratchit's Christmas dinner and is blessed by the clerk's crippled son, Tiny Tim. As the ghost of Christmas present led Scrooge to the true spirit of Christmas, may we also allow the Holy Spirit of our Advent present to lead us to the true spirit of the season. 
The true spirit is the spirit of God that flowed through the prophet Isaiah as he wrote, The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to build up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is far more than just a feel-good, everything's okay, goodwill to all euphoria, <coughs> excuse me, that many associate with the Christmas spirit. It is a dynamistic view of the spirit that does something for others, not just for oneself. It is more interested in serving than in just being. It is active and not static to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. In other words, the true spirit of Christmas is for God's grace to flow through us, to touch others, which is exactly what happened to Ebenezer Scrooge as he changed from a miser into a conduit of generosity. This is the Holy Spirit at work in our world. These words from Isaiah are the very words Jesus reads to begin his ministry. And this requires the spirit to be involved. It is not something the secular world can work up on its own initiative, nor of its own strength. It is of grace, in a manner that no humanist need try to claim humankind can do by itself. In fact, maybe our greatest sin is in resisting the awesome power of the Holy Spirit and in not having the faith to let the Holy Spirit act through humanity. At the turn of the century, Sam Jones was a, an evangelist. The story is told that at the close of one of Sam's revival services, he said, if we could compare the kingdom of God to a locomotive, what part would you be? Someone raised their hand timidly and said, Brother Jones, I'd like to be the whistle and sound God's praises. Somebody else raised a hand and said, Brother Jones, I'd like to be a wheel and just roll down the track. Brother Jones wasn't very impressed with these answers until finally a timid soul sitting down near the front raised a hand and said, Brother Jones, I'd like to be the black hole and just burn myself up for Christ's cause. Sam Jones swallowed hard and said, yes, we have enough whistles and wheels. We need more coal. I sort of like that image, I have to be honest. How can we be open to the Holy Spirit and allow it to use us in selfless service to touch the lives of those around us with God's grace, healing, forgiveness, and love. I invite you to be open, to listen to that still small voice speaking to you in the midst of everything else, the cacophony of noise that's resounding in our ears right now. Listen to that still small voice and see the need and the opportunities of your daily life journey. Be ready to act, for the Spirit's call is to action, to service, beyond self. So watch, prepare. Be ready. And like, like Ebenezer Scrooge, let's change our hearts and maybe our direction to live into this spirit at work in our lives, at work in the world around us. May we have the eyes to see it. May we have the heart open enough to receive it and be changed by the spirit. Will you join me in prayer as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Look for it. Be open to it. Be well. Stay safe. Snow's coming. Bye-bye.